doctors. And today we're talking about 10 ways to improve stomach acid levels. Stomach acid is so critical for optimal digestion. And as a clinician working with thousands of patients with leaky gut and autoimmune disease, I found that low stomach acid levels is one of the major problems that people have and why they really can't get healthy and well. And so we've got to really address this. We're going to go th through that in detail today. We're going to go through 10 ways to improve stomach acid levels. We're also going to go through what causes low stomach acid and the steps we need to take. And so if you don't know me, my name is Dr. David Jockers, and I'm a natural health doctor, and I specialize in helping people overcome digestive disorders, as well as improving their overall energy levels. I speak all around the country at churches and organizations. I'm also in a lot of natural health conferences and uh, online summits. Uh, you may have seen me in the Truth About Cancer, the Heal Your Gut Summit, the Longevity and Anti-Aging Project, and many others. And you can see my, the picture of my beautiful wife here with myself there on the bottom left. We like to have a lot of fun. And then my two little twin boys, David and Joshua here on the right with my wife at the Grand Canyon. And so that's my family and let's jump into this. So seven major functions of stomach acid. Stomach acid is so key because number one, it sterilizes the food. Anytime we're consuming food, it's gonna come with bacteria and different microbes and if we're not sterilizing it, there's a higher chance we're gonna develop basically foodborne infections. So in a, in a sense, a, a stomach bug. We're also gonna have a greater chance of developing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, candida overgrowth, parasites. So it's really protective of the entire digestive system, the entire body is this production of stomach acid in order to sterilize and kill off the bad microbes that may be on the, the food particles. Number two is protein digestion. We know that acid is critical to break down the protein molecules. If we don't get good acid secretion, it's gonna put a lot more stress on the rest of our digestive system. We're not gonna be able to metabolize our protein well, therefore we could end up with nutrient deficiencies in different amino acids. At the same time, it's gonna cause more inflammation in our gut and lead to leaky gut. It also activates pepsin, which really goes hand in hand with protein digestion because pepsin is an enzyme that, that breaks down uh, proteins. So we need pepsin to break down proteins. It also activates intrinsic factor, which is an enzyme really key for the absorption of vitamin B12, B12. So people with very low stomach acid over time, because they're not getting a good activation of intrinsic factor, they end up developing B12 deficiencies. So major thing we need to look out for. It also stimulates the delivery of bile and enzymes. So stomach acid, when it leaves the stomach, so it goes through the pyloric sphincter and into the small intestine, where it hits some different cells in the small intestine, and, the, and that, those cells realize, okay, wow, we've got acid coming in, and so they trigger the pancreas to release sodium bicarbonate as well as pancreatic enzymes to alkalize the environment a little bit more because the small intestine likes a more alkaline environment. So they release alkalizing agents as well as the enzymes and the gallbladder and liver release bile. So in order to get the optimal secretion of bile and pancreatic enzymes, we need good stomach acid leaving the stomach and starting to trigger those cells along the top part of the small intestine. It also, good stomach acid also helps close the esophageal sphincter. And this is really important. A lot of times people think acid reflux is a condition of too much acid, hyperacidity, but actually it's too little acid, hypoacidity. And what happens is when we don't have enough stomach acid, it doesn't allow the stomach or the esophageal sphincter to close well. So now if it stays open, whatever acid's in there, is going to jump up and that acid, even though it's not enough stomach acid to get the desired response in our stomach, the desired protein breakdown and sterilization, it's still harsh for the esophagus. So it can cause acid reflux. So that's a very important thing to remember that acid reflux is not necessarily too much stomach acid. It's actually typically too low stomach acid. And then finally, it's key for opening the pyloric sphincter. And that's the sphincter between the stomach and the small intestine. So the pyloric sphincter opens 
when the stomach acid is low enough. So when there's good metabolism. So what happens when people have low stomach acid, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, they get full quickly and it seems like they just stay full. And that's a sign that they're not getting that good release of the pyloric sphincter to allow the food stuffs to move into the small intestine. So here's basically what we're looking at. We have low stomach acid. We end up with poor digestion, protein and mineral deficiencies. We talked about B12 on top of that iron and zinc, really, really key, as well as we're not going to be able to break down the protein. We're not going to get the amino acids. So what happens? We get more inflammation in our, in our digestive system and we develop leaky gut and acidic blood, meaning that we've got acidic particles and inflammatory compounds circulating in our bloodstream. We don't have enough, then we don't have enough nutrients to produce stomach acid, so we don't get the zinc. Zinc is really key for stomach acid production, B12, protein, all those things very key for stomach acid production. So now we don't have the, the, the nutrients to produce it. So again, we end up with poor digestion, and it's just this continuing cycle. So here are some of the major symptoms we see associated with low stomach acid, bloating, belching, chronic gas, especially about an hour or two right after a meal, that's typically associated with low stomach acid. Indigestion, we talked about how heartburn or acid reflux is associated with too low stomach acid. Well, again, right here, indigestion, too low stomach acid. Diarrhea, because we're not sterilizing the food particles so are the, the microbes that are coming in with the food so we can end up with infections which can cause diarrhea. They can also cause constipation, particularly um, an overgrowth of methane producing bacteria in the small intestine. Chronic fatigue because we're not absorbing nutrients like B12 and iron as well as amino acids and zinc, we're gonna end up with chronic fatigue. We're also not gonna adapt to stress well so we can have adrenal fatigue. Autoimmunity because we've got more inflammation in the gut that would lead to leaky gut syndrome rectal itching and that's typically associated with microbial overgrowth in the body candida because again we're not sterilizing well so and we're not metabolizing we're not breaking down our food particles well so it creates a breeding ground for bad bacteria like parasites candida um, bacteria all kinds of stuff like that hair loss in women why would that be particularly because we are not absorbing zinc and iron well which are key for healthy hair Heartburn, we already talked about that with acid reflux. Um, again, iron B12 deficiencies, multiple food allergies and our sensitivities. Why? Because again, it's damaging the gut. So we're going to have leaky gut and food particles are, that are undigested are going to seep into the bloodstream, which ends up leading to an immune sensitivity. So that's a key issue. Acne, acne is very much associated with low stomach acid and bacterial overgrowth. Dry skin and dandruff. This is another big one that we see associated with low stomach acid. And then weak, peeling, and cracked fingernails. So again, that's associated with lack of iron, zinc, getting into, or really just a zinc deficiency and iron, not getting enough oxygen into those deep regions of the body, such as the fingernails. So these are all things to look out for and to see, hey, you may be dealing with one or more of these could be associated with low stomach acid. So let's look at the sphincter, the esophageal sphincter here. We call it the lower esophageal sphincter because there's another sphincter up higher in the esophagus. But you can see the esophagus is protected when that sphincter is closed. When it remains open, now acid can jump back up. And remember, getting enough stomach acid, getting in the stomach acid to be, in a sense, a low enough pH is critical for closing that esophageal sphincter. So somebody that has low stomach acid will actually have the esophagus open and exposed, or the esophageal sphincter will be open and the esophagus will be exposed to the acid. Very important thing to remember, because again, a lot of people with acid reflux think they have too much acid and they need to take acid blocking medications but actually they have too low stomach acid. They need to do things to help improve their stomach acid. And here are the reasons why people end up with low stomach acid. Number one, overuse of antibiotics. And we get antibiotics from prescription medications as well as consuming them in food. For example, if we're eating meat that has been, been commercially raised, we're gonna be eating lots of antibiotics. So antibiotics destroy our gut microflora, and they end up leading to overgrowth of other bad bacteria and candida, which can cause stress in the body and lower stomach acid levels. H. pylori. H. pylori is a bacteria that's 
that is a normal variant in our stomach. So normally we have H. pylori in our small intestine, stomach, and throughout our throughout our digestive system. But when it grows in too much proportion, it can get into the stomach, and in the stomach, it will release molecules like urease that um, block protein pump in inhibitors, or I'm sorry, pro the protein pumps. They block the, the stomach's ability to uh, to produce stomach acid and leads to low stomach acid, which creates an ideal environment for the H. pylori to flourish. So that can be a major issue. Chronic stress, when we're under stress, stress depletes our body's ability to produce digestive juices like stomach acid, bile, uh, pancreatic enzymes. The more stress we're under, the less we're able to produce stomach acid, bile, pancreatic enzymes. So it's very important to keep stress under control, especially around mealtime. I always tell my clients, you know, you want to do a lot of liquid when you are more stressed or when you have more activities going on. But then in the evening, if you're eating your solid food meal, any move, especially any meal with meat, we want to take long, deep breaths before we get started. We want to be in a state of gratitude. We want to clear our mind. If we're stressed, it's going to cause more, or basically it's going to reduce our body's ability to produce stomach acid and cause more overall digestive stress. Poor diet, so a diet high in carbohydrates, bad fats, toxins, that can all, all lead to low stomach acid. Eating too quickly or on the go, and this goes right into what I was just talking about. When we're eating too quickly, we're going to have stress, and that's going to deplete our body's ability to produce stomach acid. Overuse of NSAIDs like ibuprofen, Advil, these things, they, they inhibit our body's ability to produce stomach acid and break down the cell wall in the stomach and can actually lead to ulcers. Using proton pump inhibitors. So the actual medications that are given to reduce stomach acid or basically to reduce acid reflux are the worst thing for your stomach acid levels. They actually contribute to worsening levels of stomach acid because they block stomach acid production. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. When the bacteria are overgrown in the small intestine, they should, they should be in larger proportion in the large intestine. However, due to things like low stomach acid as well as bad diet and stress, we can end up having bacteria who basically migrate from the large intestine up into the small intestine and start to consume food there and start and, and basically ferment food in the small intestine, which can cause a lot of gas production in the small intestine, which will push up against the stomach and cause more overall stress and nutrient depletion throughout the, through, through the digestive tract and also put pressure on the stomach, which can then lower stomach acid levels. Uh, ge in general, aging, especially aging associated with stress, stressful aging, we're not going to produce enough stomach acid. And then food sensitivities, because food sensitivities are going to cause more stress in the body, which again will lower the level of digestive juices that are able to be produced. So these are the 10 major reasons why so many people have low stomach acid levels. And then the typical medication, again, that's given for acid reflux terrible for the body because when we lower stomach acid levels even more, when we reduce the amount of stomach acid, we end up with deficiencies in things like calcium, B12. One that's not in here is zinc. Zinc is very important and we need stomach acid to digest and absorb it well. Iron, like we talked about, vitamin A as well, which can also be one of the contributing factors behind um, issues with dandruff as well as issues with uh, with nails, with, uh, with the nail beds starting to decrease and, and become cracked, as well as protein deficiency. Protein deficiency can also cause issues like dandruff and uh, issues with the fingernails. So all of these things are downstream effects when we're taking medications that block stomach acid levels, things like Nexium, Protonics, and all these proton pump inhibitors, the worst things we can be doing. So Here's one test at home that you can do in order to see if you have low stomach acid. You mix a quarter teaspoon of baking soda in four to six ounces of cold water first thing in the morning before eating or drinking anything. So you wake up in the morning, quarter teaspoon of baking soda, four to six ounces of cold water. You drink that. Then you time how long it takes for you to burp or belch. You go up to five minutes. Normally, you actually should burp within three minutes. If you have not, if you burp between three and five minutes, it's a sign that you have lower stomach acid levels. 
And if you don't burp or you burp after five minutes, it's a sign that you have very low stomach acid levels. So again, you should, if you do this test, you should burp within three minutes. If you don't, if you burp between three and five minutes, then it's a sign that you have low stomach acid levels. But if you burp after five minutes, it's a sign you have very low stomach acid levels. So that's the baking soda test. Here's 10 ways to improve stomach acid. Number one is to use liquid nutrition throughout the day. So I'm a huge fan of doing smoothies, green shakes, lots of hydration, fermented beverages, things like that throughout the day. So liquid nutrition is easy on the digestive tract. You don't need a whole lot of digestive juices in order to metabolize it. You can consume that and take the nutrients out of it, even though you're running errands and getting tasks done. Whereas when we eat a large meal, particularly a meal with meat, really we need to be in a more relaxed state in order to produce the ideal level of stomach acid as well as other digestive juices in order to metabolize that well. Typically in our society, we're not. We're on the go and that's going to compromise our body's ability to digest and assimilate the nutrients well. Number two, use ginger. Ginger is critical for the production of stomach acid. In fact, you can chew on ginger root before a meal. It will activate the vagus nerve, which will stimulate stomach acid production. Ginger is amazing. You can do ginger tea. You can also do um, ground ginger. You can put ginger in green juices. Lots of things you can do with ginger. You can also do fermented ginger. I didn't even, uh, I didn't even remember that one, but fermented ginger is common in Asia. If you ever have sushi, they usually have fermented ginger with it. It's awesome. It's also in kimchi typically has fermented ginger too. You want to super hydrate outside of meal time. So you want to drink lots and lots of water outside of meals, at least an hour after a meal and at least 30 minutes before a meal. So you wouldn't want to drink a lot of water up, you know, after 30 minutes before a meal. So like 15, 10 minutes before a meal, you wouldn't want to really hydrate well, but up until 30 minutes, you want to drink a lot of water, drink very little, especially with meat containing meals, not as important when you're doing um, smoothies and things like that or salads, but anything with meat, you definitely want to drink as little as possible. You may take a little bit, just to take some supplements, but other than that, you really don't want to drink a lot of water so you don't dilute the stomach acid levels. Hold off on water after a meal. I recommend an hour, um, at least 30 minutes before you start doing a lot of water after a meal. Use lemon and apple cider vinegar. So you can put lemon or lime in your water, or you can also put those on foods, and that will help with apple with uh, stomach acid production and utilization. Also, apple cider vinegar and water, you can do that throughout the day, and that will also help with stomach acid production. There's a drink, Bragg's, uh, it's a ginger, it's apple cider vinegar and ginger drink with um, stevia in it that you can get at a health food store, and it's awesome. And basically that's a stomach acid, that's a, that's a kind of drink that will help to boost up your digestive juices to help optimize your digestion. Eat protein foods at the beginning of the meal. This is uh, counterintuitive. Most of the time we think, oh, I'll eat the salad first, then I'll have the meat. But actually to optimize our stomach acid, we actually want to eat the protein first because the pyloric sphincter will stay closed. And as the acid gets in there and starts to break down the protein, over time it will open up. And if we're low on stomach acid to begin with, we want as much of the acid around concentrated on the meat as opposed to around vegetables trying to get to the meat. So eat the meat first, then eat the vegetables later because the vegetables don't depend on stomach acid for to be able to broke to be able to break down and digest well. Use fermented veggies, huge with this, especially at meat meat containing meals. Do kimchi, sauerkraut, things like that. Have a few bites before you eat the meat. That will really help with stomach acid production and overall digestion. So that's one time you would want a little bit of veggies, just little fermented veggies right before the meat. Then eat your meat. Then you go ahead and eat the rest of your meal after that. Fermented drinks. These are great to have between meals. So that would be things like coconut water keeper. There's a great brand called Kavita Coconut Water Keeper. They've got lime mint. Mojito, which is my favorite. Coconut water is loaded with potassium. When the bac good bacteria that ferments the drink, they break it down and produce B vitamins, organic acids. Uh, they produce um, probiotics. So you got all kinds of good stuff in there. You get more B vitamins, all kinds of stuff that helps with energy production, that helps with the production of 
digestive juices. So really good. And then last but not least, we, we see there, eat your largest meal when you're most relaxed. We've already talked about that, how important it is to reduce the stress response before you eat that large meal or really any meal that you have meat with. It's very important not to eat that on the go, but instead to be in a relaxed state to get the right digestive juice production. So those are 10 ways to improve your stomach acid levels. Another great thing to be doing is, is using carminatives. And we talked about ginger, how important ginger is. Well, there's many good carminatives. So you can use herbal teas. There's lots of carminatives. Mint is a great carminative. Um, you also have things like cinnamon, turmeric, thyme, basil, all kinds of good stuff like that. You can have fermented vegetables and drinks are carminatives. So they all, all these things help to improve the digestive production, the production of stomach acid and other digestive juices. You can use them in essential oils. You can throw them in green juices. Fennel seed is a great carminative. So you can use that, rosemary, so many of them. We have an article on our website, drjockers.com. And just type in carminatives in the search box and it'll come up and you'll, you'll find a whole list of all the carminative herbs and then strategies on how to use these. So I'd recommend that. Okay, four ways carminatives improve digestion. Number one, they help with intestinal contractions. They also stimulate stomach acid, bile, and pancreatic enzyme release. And they also help with overall um, keeping gas and bloating under control and helping with overall nutrient absorption. Aloe vera is another great thing that helps with the production of stomach acid. Aloe vera is amazing for a number of reasons. It has polysaccharides that help improve the immune system, encourages collagen to heal and repair. It also is very good for stabilizing blood sugar. But another reason why is it actually helps with the overall production and utilization of digestive juices like stomach acid. So aloe vera, also doing things like cucumber juice. Cucumber juice can be really, really good for stomach acid levels. So here's a great juice recipe, two cucumbers, a half a slice of ginger, one lemon. Or you could do two cucumbers, a handful of mint, or two cucumbers, three stalks of celery, one lemon, half inch slice of ginger. Great recipes for supporting not only good digestive juice production, but these are also great for your skin due to the silica that's in the cucumber. So cucumber juice, Definitely recommend doing that regularly to help support stomach acid levels. And then finally, I would recommend uh, using a high quality protein powder. Most people with low stomach acid levels are really deficient in good amino acids. Getting a good protein powder is critical for that. So the best one for healing the gut is this bone broth protein, which has key amino acids that help to heal and repair the gut. And on top of that, it's got these amino acids that are great for your skin, your hair, your nails that help with stomach acid production. So there's a lot of different types here. We got vanilla, chocolate, turmeric, pure. So these are all great. All of them are fantastic. Turmeric's gonna have the most anti-inflammatory effects. The vanilla and the chocolate taste amazing. The pure kind of in water tastes like bone broth in water. Whereas the vanilla and chocolate are flavored. So if you have a smoothie, those are the best ones to use because they taste absolutely amazing and really take your, your shake to the next level. So though that is our bone broth protein. And then also on top of that, we've got another supplement that's a stomach acid support supplement. It's called Acid Prozyme. And we know that Acid Prozyme is basically supplemental stomach acid. And oftentimes when people have low stomach acid, what I will do is I will do what's called the, the Acid Prozyme, or really it's called the Betaine HCL Challenge Test. And that is where I will have them take, for example, if they have a meat-based meal, they should ideally have about four to six ounces of meat. They go ahead, they consume the meal, and either right in the middle of the meal or right at the end, they'll go ahead, they'll take one capsule of the acid prozyme. And if they notice that they have heartburn after that, and they don't normally have heartburn, so heartburn is not a normal condition for them, but they have heartburn, it's a sign they had enough stomach acid. However, if you failed the baking soda test, we know that you're not going to have enough stomach acid. So if you took two or three or four of these capsules, you may not notice anything. And if you don't notice anything, that's a sign you don't have enough stomach acid levels. So we want to go up to the point at a meat-based meal where you notice a little bit of heartburn. So it might be, let's say, four capsules causes, induces a little bit of heartburn. Then the next time you have four to six ounces of meat, you just take, you go right under your threshold. So if your threshold was four, you go right to three. And you take three with that meal and you continue to do three with your meat-based meals until again, you notice 
that mild heartburn. And then you would drop it back to two and then drop it back to one. This is how you use this. This is really how you optimize your digestive system because if you're producing low stomach acid, if you have low stomach acid levels, you've got to get your stomach acid right in order to heal the gut. It's so critical. So using this, this uh, betaine HCL challenge test is a powerful way in order to get your stomach acid levels right. Okay, and so we also have a basic digestive health support pack. This provides a couple other key items that are necessary in order to really repair your stomach acid levels. Probiotics, particularly bifidobacterium, really key for uh, nutrient absorption and healthy stomach acid levels. We have a supplement here with, called Gut Repair that has L-glutamine, D-glyceride licorice root called DGL, which is really key for um, helping to improve stomach acid levels. It is a carminative herb. And then also it's got aloe vera in there. And so again, then we talked about that helps improve stomach acid. And then it's got a, a certain type of prebiotic called arbinogalactins, which help to boost up your bifidobacterium. So it's a great combination there. And then taking some extra digestive enzymes, if you're low on stomach acid, will help take more stress off your digestive system. So that way you can really just reduce the whole stress in the digestive system so you can heal the gut and start being able to produce the ideal amount of digestive juices to optimize your digestion in the future. So we have this all on drjockers.com, the basic digestive health support pack that comes with the protein powder, um, the gut repair, and you simply just put the gut repair in your smoothie. So if you have a smoothie, the bone broth protein, you put the gut repair in there, one to two scoops. The enzymes, I use those for particularly solid food meals and particularly meals with meat. And then the probiotics I like to take outside of meal times because we know acid is the enemy of, pro, of good bacteria. And even though these probiotics are acid resistant, I still recommend taking them outside of meals just so you can make sure that you're taking you're getting everything that was in there. So I usually take it first thing in the morning or last thing at night. That's a basic digestive health support pack. This has been 10 ways to improve your stomach acid levels. Such a critical topic when it comes to optimizing your overall digestion. I really hope and pray that you got a lot out of this presentation. And I look forward to seeing you back again for some of our other short training sessions to help you take back control of your health. God bless you guys. This is Dr. Jockers signing off.